Hey guys, it's David with Cars and Code. This video is going to be a continuation of our chess AI videos. So in this video, we're going to make our board a fully 8x8 like a regular chess board instead of the 2x2 two two that we've been working with. And then we're also going to allow the human to make moves um, with the chess board. So I've already written out all this code. So instead of having to type out this line a bunch of times, I'm just going to paste that in real quick. So now we have 64 tiles here, or images, that is gonna be binding to our board. Now we just have to change the view model for our board to be that full 64 tiles. So instead of a two by two, we're gonna have an eight by eight here. And instead of just adding two pawns, we're gonna add all 16 pawns um, and all the rest of the pieces as well. So we're adding eight pawns to each team, player one and player two, as well as the four rooks four knights, four bishops, and two queens and two kings. The last thing we need to do is make sure we're setting highlighted to false and setting each piece to be the default of the piece before we add them to the board. And then we should be able to go ahead and run this and see the full 8x8 board. And there we go, we've got a, a full uh, looking chessboard. It's a little elongated, we'll, we'll take care of that later, but for now it, it looks pretty good. So now we just have to fill in this try to move human piece function. So this is gonna be what's actually moving the pieces for us. So we're gonna create a class, um, let's call it move helper or yeah, move, move helper, uh, and that's gonna actually be calculating the moves for us, making sure it's all legal and stuff like that. So in our try to move human piece, let's pass through the tile that was selected and the tile that we want to move the piece to. So now we're gonna have to create this move helper. We're gonna be wanting a, a method called is player move valid. That's gonna take um, the list of all our pieces and make sure that the, the move is actually a valid move. Okay, so now we have our instance of our move helper that we're gonna be able to call these methods on. So let's create the isMoveValid function. So we're gonna take in the start location, the end location, as well as a list of all the players, pieces, uh, player one and player two pieces. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is make sure that the from tile has an actual piece on it. If there's no piece on it, we can just return false. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is find all the possible locations that this piece can move to. And that's gonna vary based on what the piece is. A pawn can move differently if than a queen. So we're gonna have one generic called, uh, sorry, one generic method called get possible moves. And that method is gonna have a switch based on which piece it is. And then that's gonna call the corresponding method for that particular piece. Now we're gonna create a struct called a point um, that we're gonna be passing around. And that's just gonna be an X and a Y location that we're using uh, for the X and Y um, of our particular piece corresponding on the board. Okay, now we've created this uh, struct point, we can use it in our class. Now get possible moves is just gonna be a big switch statement on what piece are our pieces. So if it's a pawn, we're gonna call a method called uh, get possible pawn moves. And if it's a knight, we're gonna say get possible knight moves. And we're just gonna create a method for each one of those. So we're gonna have to add one more property in here uh, called has moved. Notice I'm passing in the pieces location, all the, the player pieces, 
if it's player one, because a pawn will only move one direction. And if it's player one, it can move up. Uh, if it's player two, then it can only move down on the board. So we need to know which player it is. But pawns, we're also going to have to know if it has moved yet or not. Uh, because if it's the pawn's first move, then they can move two. So we're going to have to create a new property here on the piece called has moved. And we're not actually gonna, we're just gonna, by default, set has moved into false. So then we say get pawn moves. We're gonna create this method called get pawn moves. Okay, now that we've created that method, we can go in here and actually fill this method in. But before we do that, I'm gonna go back up to this get possible moves and we're gonna create a method for every single possible piece. So for our knight moves, we're not going to need to know where any enemy pieces are. Uh, because knights can really move wherever they want. Uh, they, they can jump over pieces, so we don't have to calculate to see if there is an enemy piece in the way. Now for now, we're going to be ignoring things um, like discovered checks, where you wouldn't be able to move your knight out of a pin from your, your king. Uh, but we're going to ignore stuff like that for right now. And once we've got the, the game moving along a little bit, we'll come back and we'll add this those polishing touches. So we're going to go ahead and create all these methods now. Okay, so now we have all of these methods created. The last thing we have to do is actually just go through and uh, write each method. So for each one of these methods, I'm just going to try and go through these really fast because uh, there's a lot here. And uh, you can pause the video if you want and look at each method individually and see what it all is doing. Uh, but it should be pretty straightforward stuff. Okay, so here what we're doing in get pawn moves. First, we're checking if it's moving up or not. Um, if it is moving up, um, so the bottom here, we're checking if the opponent has any pieces, where the pieces x is the same as um, the, the opponent's x. So pretty much if they're in the same column on the chessboard, and if the piece is directly in front of that piece. So if there's a piece directly in front of that piece, um, if, if there's no piece, sorry, in front of his piece, then he can move up one piece. The next thing we want to check is if there's a um, no pieces, no opponent's pieces, uh, two in front of him, um, and he has not moved yet. So then he can move up two. And we're also checking allies, right? Because pawns can't move through allies. So we're checking opponents and allies to see if there's any of those pieces two squares above our piece. And if there's not, and our piece hasn't moved, then he can move up two. The next thing we're going to do is check for en passant, so if there's any piece, opponent's piece that's up and over one. Uh, so we're going to remove or do that for the left and the right side of the pawn. Okay, now we can move on to the rook moves. Let me paste this in real quick. Spelled opponent wrong. So the rook can move up, right, left, and down. Right, so for each one, we're going to be looping through until we find a piece or the edge of the board so that we can't move anymore. Um, so for example, this one is going to be looking um, Y plus I, so it's going to be looking down um, or up. I forgot if I reversed Y or not, uh, but pretty much it's going to keep going until it either encounters the edge of the board or an ally, whereas if it's an ally, then we're going to stop looping. And, and they can go to all the, the places before then. Or if we encounter an opponent, then we can still move to that square. And notice we've already yielded, returned the square that we're currently looking at. 
Um, but then we will stop after that because we can move to the piece that the opponent has. The rest of these four loops are gonna do the exact same thing, just in different directions. Next, we're gonna check Knight Moves. Knight Moves is pretty simple. Uh, we're just getting all the pieces um, that are in that same L shape for the knight. So go ahead and pause it and you can take a look if you want to, uh, a little bit deeper. Bishop moves is going to be almost identical to the rook, except it's going to be moving diagonally instead of vertically and horizontally. Queen moves is just going to be a combination of vertically and horizontally, uh, just like the bishop and rook combine. And last we have the king. Uh, the king can move anywhere adjacent to him as long as there's not an ally there. Again, we're not we're really worrying about checks or anything like that, so he can take any piece that the opponent has. Um, he just can't move into a square that an ally has. So these should be all of the possible moves. Now that we have all of these methods created, we can actually go up here and finish our is players move valid function. So we're just going to loop through all of the destinations and find out if the two tile is among those destinations. So actually, if we go now, we'll be able to get that true or false coming back from this move helper. Um, so here we can import the class and we can do instance dot is players move valid. We'll give it the from tile, the two tile, along with the list of pieces. So if the player's move is valid, the first thing we're gonna do is if they're taking an opponent's piece, we wanna remove that opponent's piece from our board. So we're gonna loop through all of player two's pieces and we're gonna see if any of his pieces is on the two square, the destination tile. Now, if that is the case, we're just going to remove that piece from the list. The next thing we're going to do is actually move the piece um, that is uh, that the actual moving piece that the player has just moved. So first, let's find that piece in our list of pieces. We're going to grab that piece, change the X and Y, and it'll be at that new location. Once we do that, we have to update the board, the tiles, so the, the tiles have the correct piece on them. So first, let's grab the old tile. So we're going to grab our old piece. We're going to set that old piece to be the default. Then we're going to grab the new tile that we're going to. And we're going to set that piece to be that new piece. Let's set this t.piece to the new x and y location. Let's try running one more time. And there we go, we can move our pawn like we would expect. We can still move it too because we haven't implemented a has a move thing, but now we can move our pieces around um, exactly like we would want to. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you next video.